Hello students, I hope you are all doing good. I welcome all of you for today's class. In the last class, we had seen that the methods of finding the square roots by using repeated subtraction and the prime factorization. So, in today's class, let us try to find out a new method of finding the square roots by using the long division method. Students, make a note that whenever we consider a perfect square of 3 or 4 digit number, its square root will always have 2 digits. Take for example, whenever you consider square root of 100. So, 100 have 3 digits, but square root of 100 is 10, which has 2 digits. You also look at another example. If we try to find the square root of 9801, it will be equal to 99. So, if you observe 9801 has 4 digits, but 99 has only 2 digits. In fact, we can also say that for a perfect square of n digits, its square root will have n over 2 digits if n is even and n plus 1 over 2 digits if n is odd. We make use of this idea about the number of digits in a square root of a given number in our new method. Let us try to find out about this method by taking up an example. So, let us try to find the square root of 529. Yes, students. Can you try to estimate the number of digits in square root of 529? Yes, since 529 is a 3 digit number, its square root will have 2 digits. So, yes, we have 529. In the step 1, place a bar over every pair of digits from the digit at 1's place. So, in our example, 529. So, starts from the 1's place and make a pair of every 2 digits. So, the first 2 digits will be 29 and since we are only left out with 1 digit, we put a bar on 5. So, in the second step, find the largest number whose square is less than or equal to the number of the extreme left bar. So, in our case, the number in the extreme left bar is 5 and the square is 2 square which is less than 5. Take this number as the divisor and the quotient with the number under the extreme left bar as dividend. So, in our case, it is 5. By subtracting 4 from 5, we get the remainder 1. In our next step, bring down the number under the next bar. So, here our number in the next bar is 29. So, bring this number to the right of the remainder. So, we get a new dividend. So, here we got 129. Moving on to the step 4, double the divisor and enter it with a blank on its right. So, in our case, when we double the divisor that is 2, we get the 4 and we are putting a blank on the right of 4. Proceeding to step 5, guess the largest possible digit to fill the blank which will also become the new digit in the quotient such that when the new divisor multiplied by the chosen number. So, in our case, if we try to fill the blank with 2, we get 42 times 2 which is equal to 84. And if we try to fill the blank with 3, we get 43 times 3 which is 129. So, we choose the new digit as 3 and get the remainder. So, here upon doing it, we got the remainder 0. And finally, at the last step, since the remainder is 0 and no digits are left in the given number, we can conclude that square root of 529 is equal to 23. Yes, students. Now, we have found the square root of 529 is equal to 23. So, by using the same steps, let us try to find out the square root of another number. So, let us find the square root of 1296. So, as step 1 says, try to put bars on every 2 digits starting from the units place. So, 96 comes under 1 bar and the digits 1 and 2 comes under the second bar. So, in the second step, choose the largest positive integer whose square is less than or equal to the number under the extreme left bar. So, here we know that 3 square is strictly less than 12 which is less than 4 square. So, therefore, 3 times 3 is 9 and by subtracting 9 from 12, we get the remainder 3. 
So, in the next step, let us bring down the number under the next bar, so which is 96. So, upon bringing down, we got the remainder as 396. In the step 4, let us double the divisor. So, here our divisor was 3, if we double it, we get 6 and let us write down a blank on its right. So, in the step 5, we need to guess the number such that it will also fill in the quotient's place. So, if we write 6 there, 66 times 6 is equal to 396 and therefore, we are left with the remainder 0. And since there are no other numbers to bring down, we conclude that square root of 1296 is equal to 36. Yes, students. Now, let us try to solve one of a very interesting word problem. So, the problem says there are 500 children in a school. For a PT drill, they have to stand in such a manner that the number of rows is equal to the number of columns. How many children would be left out in this arrangement? It is given that number of children is equal to 500. It is also mentioned that children have to stand in such a way that the number of rows is equal to number of columns. Well, students, let us consider the number of children in each row to be x. Then, the number of children in each column is also equal to x. So, therefore, the total number of children will be given by x times x is equal to 500, which implies x square is equal to 500. This implies x is equal to square root of 500. Yes, students. Now, let us try to find out the square root of 500 by using the long division method. So, we have 500. Let us try to put bar on each pair of digits starting from the units place. So, the starting two zeros will get a one bar and since we are left out with only one digit, 5 will get the another bar. Now, we know that 2 square is less than 5 which is less than 3 square. So, therefore, we can write 2 in the divisor's place thereby 2 times 2 will be equal to 4 and so the difference is 1. Now, bring down the next pair of digits under the bar and thereby the remainder becomes 100. Now, we had the divisor 2, double the divisor, it will become 4 and put a blank to its right. Guess the number which has to be written in this blank, thereby we get a number which is closer to 100. So, we know that 42 times 2 is equal to 84 which is near and just less than or equal to 100. So, 42 times 2 is 84 and it will leave the remainder 16. So, here the remainder is 16. So, therefore, we get a new number that is 500 minus 16 is equal to 484 and square root of 484 is equal to 22 and hence 16 students will be left out in this arrangement. Well, students, along with these methods, let us also try to discuss about an, a new way of finding the square root which is a kind of trick and so we can find the square roots within a very short time. It is also a slight modification of the long division method and we use a slight guesswork as well. So, let us try to explore about this way. So, let us try to find the square root of 841. So, let us try to do it by the following steps. In the step 1, divide the number into two parts by taking unit and tenth digits together as one part and the remaining digit as other part. So, let us identify these two parts by putting bars below them. So, we kept a bar below 41 and we kept a bar below 8. So, moving on to the step 2, find two numbers such that the last digit lies between their squares. So, in this case, the last digit is 8 and it lies between 2 square and 3 square. Moving on to step 3, identify a lesser number as the last digit of the required answer. Here it is 2 because 2 square was less than or equal to 8. So, it is clear that the answer will be 2 and a number. For the unit digit, let us observe the unit digit of the given number. So, in the given number that is 841, the unit digit is 1. By using the property, we know that from the list of the squares, 
we see 1 comes as a first digit at 1 square and 9 square. So, this implies the answer must be 21 or 29. Proceeding to step 5, to choose the right answer between them, let us use the two numbers we identified in the first step. In the first step, we have identified the numbers 2 and 3. Now, add 0 and make them as two digit numbers. So, when we add zeros, it becomes 20 and 30 and then take their squares. Therefore, we have got 400 and 900. So, our given number 841 lies between 400 and 900. In the step 6, we observe that given number is near to which of the above two numbers. So, in this case 841 is near to 900 that is it is near to the right side number. So, this concludes that the required unit digit in the answer must be 9. So, therefore, the answer is 29. Let us try to find out square root of 2304 by using the same trick. As a step 1, let us put bars for every two digits from the units place. So, there is a bar under 04 and there is a bar under 23. So, observe the left extreme bar, we have the number 23. So, we know that 23 lies between 4 square and 5 square. Take the left number that is 4 square less than 23. So, this means that the answer will have 4 and a number. As a step 4, from the table of squares, the unit digit 4 appear at 2 square and 8 square. So, the answer must be 42 or 48. We have got the numbers 4 and 5. So, now by putting 0, we make it 2 digit numbers and thereby we get 40 and 50. So, making them squares, we get 40 square and 50 square which are nothing but 1600 and 2500. Now, the given number 2304 clearly lies between 1600 and 2500. Since 2304 is less than 2500, that is it is nearer to the right side number, the answer must be 48. Well students, we had discussed various methods of finding the square roots of the given numbers. But what if we were asked to find a square root of a decimal number? Let us try to learn the method of finding the square root of a decimal number by taking up an example. Find square root of 17.64. So, as a step 1, to find the square root of a decimal number, we put bars on the integral part. So, in this case, the integral part is 17 and place bars on the decimal part. So, in our case, the decimal part is 64. So, thereby proceed as usual. So, we get a bar on 17 point a bar on 64. Moving on to the step 2. Now, proceed in a similar manner. The leftmost bar is on 17. And we know that 4 square is less than 17 less than 5 square. Take this number as the divisor and the number under the leftmost bar as the dividend. So, in our case, the dividend is 17. Now, divide and get the remainder. We know that 4 divides 17 4 times, leaving up the remainder as 1. Moving on to the step 3, since the remainder is 1, write the number under the next bar, so which is 64, so that we get 164 as the new remainder. Moving on to the step 4, double the divisor and enter it with a blank on its right. Since 64 is a decimal part, put a decimal point in the quotient. So, in our case, since the divisor was 4, making it double, we got 8 and we kept a blank to the right of 8. And so, we also placed a decimal point in the quotient beside 4. So, at the step 5, we know that 82 times 2 is equal to 164. Therefore, our new digit which has to be filled in the blank is 2. So, now divide and get the remainder. So, when we place 2 there, we know that 82 times 2 is equal to 164, leaving up the remainder as 0. And finally, in the step 6, since the remainder is 0 and no bar is left, therefore, the square root of 17.64 is equal to 4.2. Now, let us see how to put bars for decimal numbers with odd number of decimal digits. For example, let us consider 0 
we start putting bars from the decimal point and move towards right. So the first bar is over the starting two decimal digits which are 3 and 4. And for the second bar we can put 0 after 1 and we put the bar as shown here. So we observe that the first bar is on the initial two digits 3 and 4 and the second bar is on the digits 1 and 0. And then we apply the other steps of long division method in the same way as we discussed earlier. Well students, in a similar way we can always find the square root of a given decimal number. But remember, one must be very careful while putting bars on the numbers. So when we consider the integral part, we start considering the pairs of numbers from the units place and then we start moving to the left. But then for the decimals parts, we start moving to the right. So we start taking up pairs and then we put bars on them for integral parts to the left and to the decimals parts to the right. So let us try to take up an another example and try to find out its square root. Now let us try to find square root of 31.36. So as a step 1, let us put bars on the integral parts first, so thereby a bar on 31 and for the decimal part a bar on 36. As a step 2, we know that 31 lies between 5 square and 6 square, so thereby we consider 5 as a divisor. So now 5 divides 31 5 times leaving up the remainder 6. So as a step 3, take down the number under the next bar which is 36, so thereby our new remainder is 636. Now also double the divisor, so our divisor was 5, by doubling it we got 10. Put a blank on its right. In the step 4, since we have brought down 36, which is a decimal part, we put a decimal point in the quotient. So as in the step 5, let us try to find out the number which has to be filled in the blank, thereby we get a number which is nearer to the new remainder. So we know that 106 times 6 is equal to 636, which will leave the remainder as 0. So finally, as of step 6, since there are no other numbers left out and our remainder was 0, the square root of 31.36 is equal to 5.6. Yes, students. Now, let us try to consider a situation. Ramya has a squared cloth of area 125 centimeter square. She wanted to know whether can she prepare a handkerchief of side 15 centimeter. If she is unable to do it, she wanted to know what is the maximum length of the side that she can prepare the handkerchief by using the squared cloth. In such situations, we need to estimate the square root. So estimating the square root will always let us know how close a square root is to a perfect square. So looking back to the Ramya square piece of cloth, it has an area of 125 centimeter square. We know that side of a square is equal to square root of area. So here since the area is 125, the square root of area is equal to square root of 125. Clearly 11 square is equal to 121 and 12 square is equal to 144. So therefore 11 less than square root of 125 less than 12. As 125 is closer to 121 than 144, square root of 125 is approximately equal to 11. Hence, Ramya can make a handkerchief of length 11 cm. So now, let us try to estimate the square root of 250. We know that 100 is less than 250 which is less than 400. So square root of 100 is equal to 10 and square root of 400 is equal to 20. So, clearly 10 is less than square root of 250 which is less than 20. But still, we are not very close to the square number. Because we know that 15 square is equal to 225 and 16 square is equal to 256. So, therefore, 15 is less than square root of 250 which is less than 16 and 256 is 
much closer to 250 than 225. So, square root of 250 is approximately equal to 16. How to estimate the square roots? Now, in a similar manner, let us try to estimate the square root of 350. We know that 100 is less than 350 which is less than 400. Since square root of 100 is equal to 10 and square root of 400 is equal to 20, it implies 10 less than square root of 350 less than 20. But we also know that 18 square is equal to 324 and 19 square is equal to 361. Therefore, 18 less than square root of 350 less than 19 and 361 is much closer to 350 than 324. So, therefore, square root of 350 is approximately equal to 19. Well, students, by this we had completed this chapter. So, before we wind the class, let us try to recollect what all things we have learned today. We started our class by the method of finding the square root by using long division method. Moving on, we, all, we have also found out a trick of finding the square roots for a 3 digit number and 4 digit number. And finally, we explored the way of estimating the square roots. Hope you had enjoyed the class. Thank you.